okay. How many of you think of yourselves as creative people? Okay. How many of you do not think of yourselves as creative people? All right, that's pretty interesting. All right, so a couple of you don't think of yourselves as people who are creative, and then there's some abstainers in the class. Abstaining, that's fine, I get it. What is the thing that goes into making someone creative? Motivation. What's that? Motivation. Motivation. What's that? What else goes into being creative? Yes. Motivation and a variety of experiences. What else? Having an open mind. And an open mind. Okay, so the people who don't think of themselves as creative, are you not motivated? Have a variety of experiences? An open mind? I think that often what we think of as creative is <coughs> a person who looks creative as opposed to one who is creative. Often we think of creative people as having sort of an archetype to them of the way that they look, the way that they interact with other people, a little bit fuzzier on the edges maybe. When in reality, creativity has much more to do with whether or not you're willing to ship product. It's been my experience that people who create things are their own worst critics so badly that a great deal of amazing things don't make it out into the world. Um, so the reason that I bring up creativity as the last thing in this entire class is I want you all to be able to actually ship product without getting in your own way. I've got about seven minutes until I lose my voice entirely. <clears throat> so I'm going to keep this one really short and sweet. If you have ever looked at your work and thought, especially work you've done on your own, and thought it's not good enough, I'm going to set it aside and wait and, to, and come back to it later. How many of you have ever actually come back to it later and then shipped the product? Written the book, done the thing. What's that? Come back to it repeatedly and never finished it, exactly. Why don't you ever let other people see that product? Fear, excellent. What's the fear of? Fear of criticism from others. What does that criticism from other people do? Okay. It's a kind of bullying. All right. Well, there's some criticism that's good. There's some criticism that's helpful. And then there's a lot of criticism that is not. Yes, William, go ahead. I was going to say my downfall is I have a perfect, or I try to be a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So if something's not perfect, then everyone Perfectionism is a disease. Yes, exactly. Recalls. What's that? Recalls. What? Recalls. Recalls. When I say ship product, I mean anything. I mean write a poem, write a book, form a company, complete a crowdfunding campaign, write a program, ship an app. Ship product is the general term for did you make the thing actually appear in the real world such that other people can consume it. Okay? I call it shipping product because it, some, it in a little ways kind of depersonalizes that feeling for me. I have horrible imposter syndrome. Everyone I know who is really really good at what they do has horrible imposter syndrome. Every single one is terrified every time they ship a product. But they do, and that and the, the reason that they're so extraordinary is they don't let that fear get in the way. So I think what many people are waiting for is to not be afraid anymore before they release that epic poetry or application or um, simulation or book or car repair instruction manual to the world is that they're waiting because they think that internally they won't feel fear at the moment at which it's the right time to release that product. Do you agree with me? Yeah. What other reasons do you think that, what, what, what is the thing that you're waiting for for those things that you've never released to the public? What is the feeling that you're waiting for? That there's no more improvements ever that can be made to it. What else? Free time. Free time. What else? So mostly just the feeling that you want to release the best possible thing you can to the world and that if it's not as good as you think you can make it, you don't want to let it go? Yeah. 
Everything is getting improved on. Yes. That is very true. And when, and what is a really great example in pop culture right now of an artist who can't leave well enough alone? I will know, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. What's that? It's in the U.S. It's in Hollywood. And it is Star Wars. George Lucas finally let his baby go unto Disney because he kept screwing with it again and again. He was never happy with it originally. And that's the thing that you're talking about. That's the thing that we're all talking about. Everyone was like, just leave it alone. It was perfect the way that it was. And he said, but it's not the way I wanted it to be. It was never right. He never viewed it as a finished product. And while I was irritated frequently at that, that doesn't mean that I don't sympathize with the feeling that he had, which is it's not as good as it could be. This is the thing I'm going to be known for for the rest of my life, for, for lifetimes after mine. I want it as good as it can possibly be. How many of you know who Virgil is? The gentleman that wrote the, uh, the book uh, The Aeneid, which is the story of the escape from Troy. Did you know that he tried to burn the Aeneid on his deathbed? And that, the, and that uh, uh, Octavian, Caesar Augustus, saved the copy, the last copy of the Aeneid from being burned. One of the greatest masterworks of Western civilization, of all civilization, was almost destroyed by the creator because he didn't think it was just quite right enough on his deathbed with no chance to ever fix it again. Yes? Do you think that when you make a piece of art, it's also mm -hmm. an extension of yourself? I do think that art is an extension of yourself. You don't want to share that with other people? I absolutely agree with that. I've got a book coming out next year that terrifies me. When it, when it comes out next year, every single person on the internet is going to be tearing it apart and they're going to shred it they're going to say um i mean people say horrible things there's going to be a lot of people that say nice things but mostly when someone has something nice to say they keep their mouth shut it's when people says has something horrible to say that they open their mouths and it's very hard for artists for people everyone in here creates something whether it's breakfast or a, a painting and it's very hard for people to recognize that the negative voices that they're hearing are only a tiny tiny fraction of the overall audience that loved what you created. It's just the people that love things don't say anything about it. Okay? Unless you're a Twilight fan, and that's cool, you know, if you want to do that. Um, so, yes. Fan. What's that? You know, I read through, like, three of the books, and the last one I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So, yes, exactly. And, and the thing that I just want to encourage you folks all to do is let it out into the world. It's never going to be perfect. If you have an app that you've written, and you want to see it used by people, it needs to be out there getting used. It's never going to be perfect, ever. You get to 80% and you release it, and then you iterate for better. Always iterate for better. I've talked to you before about Pareto optimality. You do the best that you can do, and if the best you can do is the difference between 80% of the way there in five minutes or 100% of the way there in six months, you opt for the first instantly because products change over time as people use them. Even art is not intended to be something that is appreciated in stasis. Over time, our appreciation of art changes. Here's a good example. What about those heinous-ass white Tauruses that were hanging in the, the uh, um, Seattle Art Museum for years? You guys, do you know about the, the, the white Taurus, Ford Tauruses that were hanging all over the exploding cars in the Seattle Art Museum? For like 5% of the time, I was like, that's really interesting art. And the other 95% of the time, I'm like, that's dumb. You know, and then a lot of people, I think, felt the same way, and maybe that's what art is for, is to have you sit there and, have, and flip back and forth between, I like it, I hate it, I don't know, maybe it needs to be replaced by one of those crazy mobiles that those folks who created the stuff at Seattle Opera did. But the point is that the art needs to be out there so people can see it. Yes? I want to write a book, but I'm afraid that it may be used What's that? I want to write a book. Yes, you want to write a book. But I'm afraid it may be used for terrorism. You're afraid that it might be used for terrorism. Now I'm really interested in your book. What's the topic of the book? Um, it's the topic of uh, a local Seattle. Local Seattle's. And about maps, about civilization. Okay. About then and now, how civilization was then and now. I think you're going to be fine and not have to worry too much about whether or not terrorists are going to use it. If they've already, if they've, if you've got maps in your book and they were available online, they're they're fine. You're good. I mean, if you're really worried, just take it to a publisher and see what they think. 
does the stuff that I've been saying to you about letting the creation, your creations out in the world make sense? What I did in this class, I hope, was start with giving you the tools to create things. And then we talked about what your responsibilities are as someone who gets to create the future. But the last part of it is let it out there. Let people see it. Let people use the thing. The product that my company makes is not perfect yet. It'll never be perfect. All I can ever do is continue to drive hopelessly towards that perfection. And I'm okay with doing that. That'll be the trade-off that you'll make too, to get also the joy of people who can use your product, who like your art, who want to read your books, who use your software that you create. Does that make sense? Have that mindset of making and releasing something, and it'll help people more than the product that you never release in the world ever will. Are there any questions about why and how to be creative? I got about 30 more seconds of voice in me before it quits. <coughs> Any last thoughts? Okay. Your homework is to figure out the thing that you need to release in terms of shipping your own product. App, book, software, website, I don't care what it is. Figure out what it is, write it down, and then write down the first step of the to-do to get it all the way out into the world. All right? Because I'm going to make you keep working on it during the final for this class. Because I'm awful like that.